conference will now be recorded. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this regular meeting of the Vader City Council. It is Wednesday, April 24th, 2024, and it is 6.04 p.m. Roll call. Jason Daly. Here. Randy Hall. Here. Sheila Goff. Here. Mayor Shai. Here. Michael Ferguson. Uh, Mr. Ferguson did ask to be excused. Mike Parsons. Here. Excellent. We have a quorum. Pledge of Allegiance. Scott, would you do this? <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mayor's report. <laughs> Uh, Kessel Court subdivision. Uh, the public hearing is scheduled for May 16th at the next planning committee meeting. Uh, code enforcement. So we discovered that our city parking codes were very insufficient um, to be able to properly enforce parking around the city. So we have the attorney working on um, a draft update for your review. Uh, Lewis County 911 annual fee. So every year we have to pay our, our fair share of uh, um, Lewis County and 911 dispatch. Um, for some, forever our cost has been just a few thousand dollars. Last year it was $4,017. Uh, this year our cost is nearly $18,000, um, which was a big surprise. So uh, we've reached out to the county manager to try to understand um, what their methodology was for that. Um, looking at the fees, um, a lot of the small cities went up dramatically um, while the bigger cities in the county went down. So we'd like to understand why that happened. Uh, Outbound oh, Port Lift Station removal. So letters have been sent to the property, the two different property owners in that area to inquire whether they would be receptive to um, a utility easement. So we're waiting to hear back from them. May Day and Warden Park Grand Opening. Of course, that's May 4th, parade, live band, games, and more. And of course, at the end of uh, May as well, the circus on May 30th, uh, which is a Lions Club fundraiser. Uh, they have tickets available. So, um, I don't mind uh, using the city uh, to advertise for Lions Club events as they use the, those funds to. Uh, for a variety of things with regard to um, food for those in need and presents for kids during Christmas. And so uh, they're a great uh, community organization. So um, council reports, does any members of the council have anything to report? I do have a statement from Mr. Ferguson. Like I said, he was unable to attend tonight, um, but he had a statement for the council um, regarding some of the city business. Um, he said, uh, so last week he attended a, a demonstration of cloud permit um, by, the, uh, by the vendor. He says, after our meeting with the cloud permit representatives, I feel that I am confident in supporting Vader, contracting with them for those services. Um, he says he's fortunate he has other commitments tonight. Um, and then regarding the McMurphy Park project, it says, I'm excited about getting septic and water from McMurphy Park. I'm on the fence about having an RV park. We have a beautiful rural space that I feel should be developed graciously. Our neighboring towns have those more developed spaces. I'm not against the plan that had been developed before my participation on council, but I'm expressing my concern. Just wanted to share that with uh, the council. Moving on to agenda approval. I do not have any changes. Make a motion to approve the agenda city council meeting for April 24th, 2024. We have a motion by Mr. <coughs> Hall to approve the agenda as written. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Ms. Goff. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes approval. I'll make a motion that we're city council meeting for April 10th, 2024. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the minutes for April 10th. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hall. Any discussion? There are none. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? Motion carries. Voucher approval. I make a motion to do voucher approval the end of April 2024 for eight thousand five hundred and eight dollars and forty cents total for April twenty twenty four thirty nine thousand four thirty three nine. If a motion by Mr. Hall to approve the vouchers as written, do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Goff. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Is that the person? Um, I wasn't sure. Jason, was that you or was that Mike that said I? I only heard one of you. That was me. And me. That was me. Oh, God. Both, both affirmative. Thank you. It's unanimous. Um, no special reports tonight. Any public comment tonight? We have a comment from Mr. Joe Notch. Uh, South Louis County Chamber is having a ribbon cutting tomorrow at noon at the Toledo Lumber Department, which is the garage building across from the boat ramps. And tomorrow evening at 5 p.m., Toledo County is hosting a business after hours. And the topic is the Winlock fiber install status. So if anyone's interested in that, that would probably be a good thing. All right. Thank you for that chamber update. Any other public comment? Okay. Moving on to city business. Item number one, council to consider the cloud permit, promote proposed contract. It's a three-year contract, 6,500 the first year. 5,000 for the second and third year. Um, I know last council meeting, uh, this was tabled so that um, some council members could attend the uh, presentation. Uh, and of course, Mike Ferguson did. And um, as I read from his statement, he was um, in support of that. He was actually, uh, at the end of that meeting, he was very excited about that particular program. So. Any other discussion or questions? Can we, can we only do it for a year? Do we have to do it for three years? I mean, what if we get it and we don't like it? Um, I don't know. I did not. Okay. This is in our budget. It's not in our budget right now. We did, we did not budget for it. We will have to do um, a budget amendment for it, but um, we certainly have the funds for it with the different building that's been going on and the uh, the savings that we've been we've been seeing. So mm -hmm. that's it, affording it is not a problem. I make a motion that we approve the cloud permit proposed contract. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve uh, the uh, contract with cloud permit. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hall. Uh, more discussion. I don't know enough about it. I don't think the citizens know enough about it. I, I'm trying to get it out there on social media, but. <clears throat> That's how I feel. Yeah, that's why we had the the um, 
meeting last week, so people could come and, and check it out. Um, I just wasn't notified soon enough. Um, and you can test it well. Where you could it doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> so, um, all right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the uh, contract with cloud permit, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. <clears throat> we'll uh, make sure you get a chance to get on there and, and see it. check it out. It's pretty <laughs> easy. Yeah. Um, Moving on to item number two, council will discuss the draft McMurphy Park RCO grant plan. Um, so um, in your packet is um, it's kind of a combination item number two and three on the council agenda, um, approving resolution and the um, the plan. I've got to go all the way back to here. Um, so, I know this went out just uh, an hour and a half, two hours ago. Um, so the application authorization resolution is, it does not, it does not uh, obligate the city to actually um, expend any funds. Um, all, all it's doing is just saying these people can apply for the grant on behalf of the city. So that's what the, the resolution is. Um, but uh, also in that uh, packet is a little information about it. Um, so right now the, this grant, if it was awarded, uh, would provide 70% of the funding needed for the project. The remaining 30%, similar to the Wardham Playground project, will be a combination of city REIT funds and other private, privately sourced grants. <clears throat> so the city would be able to go out and, and find other grants to uh, help um, pay for our portion. Uh, the total project cost is, is estimated to be around $500,000 with RCO funding about 350 of that. Um, as such, the city would be responsible for sourcing the remaining $150,000. Um, we, um, during the Warden Park play Playground project, we used about 90,000 of REIT um, and uh, it's already re it's already grown back to 114,000. So we're about 35,000 short of that. Um, however, um, the city would not be required to um, expend any funds, assuming we got it until July of next year. Uh, REIT comes from the sale of homes. And as you know, we have plenty of homes being built in the city right now. And so uh, it's, uh, it's almost a certainty that we have 150,000 refund by then, and of course we can supplement that with other grants so that we don't have to expend the full 150. So um, the project would bring water, city water to the park, install a septic system, install a new bathroom and shower facility, and create five RV sites with hookups. This will allow a permanent or seasonal camp post to provide security at the park, which has been an issue that the uh, Parks Board has been fighting for a long time. Um, and even with conservative usage of the revenue from the RV sites, will fully fund the new city expenses for the water and power and create a new source of park revenue. That would be the, um, the project, and then of course we put a picture in there too, um, that kind of shows where it would be when you first drive in. Um, the small RV area would be on the left as soon as you drive into the park. Um, so it's well away from the creek area. So if I vote yes on this, I'm voting yes for the RV park? Um, the application is up next week. And so if we wanted to remove the RV park from, from the plan, we could. I know the Parks Board was in support of that. That was part of their plan for, um, I think, what, four years ago when they first had this plan, that was, that was the idea. Um, so, 
So that's in in the plans. It could be removed from from the plans, and we could just try to go for a bathroom facility. Um, that will affect the city long term. That would affect the city budget because you know there's going to be now there's going to be water costs down there mm -hmm. for the water hookup. You know, monthly water, monthly power, um, things like that. And so we wouldn't have a way to. to Which the RV it. would help pay for that. But yeah. who wants to give the RV away? That's Bader's Park. That I don't want a bunch of strangers staying in an RV park there. That's it's a, it's our park. It's Bader's Park, and you're it's, wanting to bring strangers in. I agree. I think having trailers down in parts would, would take away from the whole park experience. So, so my thought on it is you get people that because it's not a long-term RV park it's not like down at the end of 506 it's going to be a weekly stay it's going to be tourists it's going to be people coming into town looking around spending money and leaving yeah that's what the that's what the parks board had in mind you know it kind of fits in with you know what we've heard what we heard from uh, mary garrison a few weeks ago with regard to tourism and and getting people into town um it opens up the door for a park host so we can have security and maybe keep the park open year-round which will be good for the residents as well um, they had it situated up above, um, away from the creek near the entrance, so that it would um, probably not even be visible from the creek area below. My, my other concern right there, with backing up to the neighbor's property, would be how close it would be to his house. So, sounds like sounds like the RV park isn't um, really supported by the council this this time. So, um, at least I thought that we were trying to make the city grow and bring people to the city to visit. Well, that's not the only way. I mean, okay. how many, how many, how many RV spaces are there going to be? How much money is that really going to be? With the litter, with the trash pickup, with having somebody down there. Um, so the plan had only five, so with one of those being the host. So, so only four, four of so very, very. How various. much money? How much business when we're all losing our private park there's so many families that go there and use the swimming pool it's nice to go there and have peace not have people with their quads their motorcycles everything no that, quads and nobody's talking about quads and motorcycles well, if they come about, with an rv you don't think they're going to come with that and then of course that no. would be one of the park host responsibilities they're going to be so be. quiet and nice and stay inside there no they're not well, obviously, they probably utilize the park facilities. And who is going to be a park host that's going to want to stay down there for free? It's not going to be somebody with a nice million dollars. It's going to be a... Actually, it's it's fairly common for um, folks with nice RVs to be camp hosts. I know the one in Mossy Rock. I know, the, I know the lady there that's a camp host. She has a brand new RV. She, she that's where it's I know the place. I know the one in Chehalis at Alexander. Um, the lady there has a new R, has a brand a new RV. Um, not so, a poor space. And so I know the, that it's it's there's plenty of people that are interested in doing it. And along with the the, the rules that the park board would create, you know, there'd be limits on the the age of the RV. There'd be rules, and that's why you'd have a park host so you could. Um, make sure that people are following the rules. 
Yeah, I, I don't see right now we don't problem. I don't see a real problem with that few spaces. It should be easy to enforce. I think the accomplices wouldn't need to look like myself. Uh, I, I I'm kind of leaning towards it. Yeah, I'm leaning against it. Jason, are you there, Jason? Uh -huh. hmm. what, what's that, what's that, Randy? Well, do you have any feelings about this? You issue? want an RV park? No, well, I don't like it when you call it an RV park. If they're just going to be uh, camps, camp spaces. Yeah, okay. RV park well, okay. I'm like it's going to be a long term. Get, get the negative yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not long term. It's. And no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're there a week, then the next people are there a week, then the next people. That's still long term, even if it's not the same people. It's still long term. It's our private little park. I think we have the vote for it. I don't care. I don't. I, 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 I'm gonna um, approve. Is um, approving the resolution seven two twenty four? The Murphy Park RCO application authorization. We have a motion by Mr. Hall to approve resolution 07 2024 for the McMurphy Park RCO application uh, authorization. Um, is there a second? Well, Let's divide the two up. This would just be for the, um, the, the resolution does not lock us into whether we have an RV park. Um, the resolution is simply uh, approving the listed people to apply um, for the grant. So, um, and uh, we can, we'll keep talking about what we're gonna apply for um, after we get past this resolution then, since we have a, a motion for the resolution. Do we have a second for the, um, application authorization. Second. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Parsons. Um, any discussion just on the um, the application authorization resolution? I think I said what I, what I thought. All right. Hearing none. All those in favor of approving resolution 07 2024 um, McMurphy Park RCO application authorization say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. <clears throat> so moving back to um, what we're going to apply for. Like I said, the, the deadline for this is next week, and so um, we'll, we'll put in an application this week. I just want to make sure that this, the, the city council is obviously in, in, in support of whatever we're going we're gonna, to uh, apply for. So um, it sounds like... Um, at, at least half the folks um, that are currently on here. And then even what Mr. Uh, Ferguson said in his uh, letter to council that he was on the fence about the, R the RVs. Um, sounds like the RVs are not in, in support by the majority of the council. Right now. So I, I also wonder if Mike, like Jason, because RV park is not a long-term thing and I would not be wanting a long-term resident staying down there but when it's a vacation spot for people to come and enjoy our city and spend money then I'm all for that and I think that that if it's the name is that the is it just the name for you Jason that Threw it off. Yeah, when you, call it, when, you, when you call it an RV park, it sounds like it would get something like out by the freeway in an RV park like that. So that's, yeah. that's what went through my head. <laughs> yeah, me. I don't uh, want that either. It's a McMurphy <clears throat> campground or camp sites. For RVs for hookup. So yeah, it's just 
it's just five small pull, well, not small, five pull through spots for RVs at the top of the hill when you first drive in on the left. So it, all, it would all be in that corner when you first come in on the left-hand side. That's, that's where the five RV spots would be. And one of those is a camp host. So it's, it's very minimal. I think it makes sense. I don't. And, I, and you were asking about how much money could four spots make. Um, I'm at a equestrian center in Missouri. We don't have sewer hookup. And it's fifty dollars a night to park my RV here. The parking lot <clears throat> at fifteen percent utilization on those four spots at forty dollars a night, it would generate about ten thousand dollars a year in revenue. Thank you. Yeah, just make sure I get it back. Um, so. You know, yeah. fifteen percent utilization is very a very conservative number. Um, you know that would that would. I mean, if we we're open year round, it would be easy to do more than that. Even if we were only open during the summer, um, you could get that level of utilization um, in just a matter of a few months. Um, and again, you know that that would that would um, the idea is that that would pay for the the extra excuse me, extra cost the city is going to have to absorb for um, having water down there, having maintenance for the um, the septic system, the power for the building, so. Joe, you know, would, would that also allow us to have um, drive-in access to the year end for everybody, since there's going to be a house? Yeah, so that's what the Parks Board was thinking, is that if we had a, a year-round camp, camp host, we could keep it open year-round and um, have someone there to monitor um, monitor issues. And if anyone misbehaved, you know, they'd be there. They could take pictures of vehicles coming in and out and easily identify them. And so, yeah, the this, this city, the citizens of the city would get enhanced usage of the park as well. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I think I mean I think the parks board was kind of echoing what the council feels is that they didn't want McMurphy to turn into a into a giant campground, a giant RV park. That's why they were trying to keep the RV spaces um, to a minimum in in a place where um, they wouldn't impact the look and feel of the park, since they'd be all the way up at the top of the hill near the entrance. But they will be using the swimming hole. They will be coming in. Absolutely, the park. absolutely, yeah. Those... That'll be strangers. That'll be this is Bader. Yeah, this absolutely. Is... They're, they're, those, those four families would be using the using the creek probably just just like the other. Well, if you go down there in the summer, you know, there's 50 other families down there that are using it, and so this would add another four people, four families there um, from the, from the RV park. So. I just think it makes it too commercialized. It's a park. Does she so. not want the town? Um, any other? Well, so I guess I would. I guess we should have a a, a, a motion about what uh, what we apply for. Then that way we can make sure we have the the council's opinion. Um, that way when. You know, Assuming we actually got the got the grant um, next year when we had to start filling out some forms, council was in support of it. So, um, does anyone would anyone like to make a motion? You mean consider the application? Or? No, the application is fine. Just oh. order to that's why you didn't hear me. I thought you were ignoring me, Joe, but my mute button was Not on. this time. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve the RV campsites with the grant application. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to, um, to approve our application with the RV site plan. Is there a second? Second. Second on Mr. Hall. Um, more discussion about that? 
never been punched in the face. He's never gone. He's never grown up. He's never gone through. How about public input? Who has been punched in the face, but? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> with parts were talked about it extensively, and like I said, this is the same plan that we had you know, four years ago when we applied for this, or excuse me, two years ago, so. All right, all right, well, all, all those in favor of approving the application with the limited RV sites, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. I think um, the other good thing about that is when somebody that lives in town doesn't have room and their family wants to come visit them, they and they bring an RV, they can stay down at the park for a couple days and visit family. And so it is family down at the park. It just opens it up for everybody. I'm going to North Carolina right now, and the closest RV park is over a half an hour away from my daughter's house. So I think it's great. I'm going to let park in my yard. <clears throat> That's what all the neighbors want, is a bunch of RVs parked in the yards. Well, you said they were only going to be here briefly. <clears throat> well, along with this, assuming that it actually got done, um, there'd have to be a whole suite of rules that the council would have to approve. And so that could be anywhere from limitations to age of RVs that we allow in, um, length of stay, mm -hmm. um, any number of rules that we could that we could uh, request. I think you're going to get people that are hiding out. Vader isn't right here where everything is. Have you seen the park, Lewis and Clark Park, that's over... It goes into the old grove forest. They hardly have anybody camp there because there's not a lot to do. So that's my feeling is we're just trying to city, city, city make it. And it's our little park. It's our little park that all of our families love to go to. I think it'll still be, and, you know, it'll still be a park that people love to go to. Well, if you don't think that anybody's going to be there, then it shouldn't make any issue at all. Because nobody will be there, right? That. I didn't say that. <laughs> All right, well. How about public input? Jeez. Bob doesn't know he's not muted. <laughs> I think he did. Um, that is the end of city business. Elected official comments. Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned at 6.37 p.m. Thank you, everybody.